Okay, so it's time to start looking at coilover towers. So I've just tacked this one together. Uh, it's quite a beefy boy. And then also this bottom section, which Troy has designed, which by the looks of it's for a bump stop. Um, I probably won't be able to use this. So I'm just gonna leave this loose. I'm probably gonna end up kind of cutting a lot of this kind of back because I think I'm gonna have issues with the radius arm, uh, well the flip radius arm mounts hitting. So we're just gonna start with what we know. We know that we need coilover towers. These ones are made for the kit. Um, I was thinking about potentially using Matt's ones because I think they just fit without having to cut the arch, but I also think I'm gonna have to raise the mounts up on top of the diff to get over the radius arm. So the extra height of Troy's brackets, and obviously they're made for the, um, the fish plates as well. Uh, and they are a nice unit. So, yeah, like I said earlier, it's just gonna be a matter of kind of putting in what I know and mixing and matching what I can, because obviously it's an unconventional setup, uh, which is what I seem to like doing. But um, yeah, you can see I've basically obviously tacked it together, lined up, lined it up kind of on the chassis rail where it's going to sit and lock into these slots and I've just got a paint marker and kind of marked the um, the shape of where it's going to sit. Hopefully you can see those marks there. Um, it's a bit tricky because obviously it needs to sit kind of back. Um, this is my first side so once I do this it'll obviously make more sense on the other side. So the other thing that we need to do is also trim up, we'll figure out what we're going to do with this um, leftover mount which obviously has the engine mount attached to it. Um, my original plan was to kind of box it in, but the coilover mount pretty much goes right to the, the back side of the chassis rail. So what I've done is basically mark out where it's going to, where that is on this. I was thinking about either cutting this out and welding it to this, um, but what I'm thinking I might do is cut this back so it'll fit in. As you can hopefully see, I've just transferred the marks. So when we're at the height of that factory bracket, we've got, you know, X amount of width. So I've then just got my square off the chassis rail and just marked, marked a line along there. So I know at the height that that is, uh, where it's gonna sit. All right, quick update. We've got a coilover tower in. So it was actually, relatively painless. Um, as I said, I pretty much just sat it in there, marked, well I could obviously see where it had to go with the, um, the rebates for it, and just kind of sat it on the chassis rail where I could, um, marked and cut off um, the old part of the engine mount, so that's kind of just behind there. I'll probably end up just sealing that up with some polyurethane or something. And then just kind of marked each side and took a pretty good educated guess, which actually ended up being bang on. Um, had to unbolt some stuff on the inside, obviously, move my water to air core out of the way. Um, I think it'll all fit in okay. It's kind of designed well because you can actually access the bolt. We should be able to access the bolt nice and easily from inside. So um, yeah, and then I've just put some pinch weld around the outside. I'm unsure about the top. I'm kind of nervous that mud and stuff's gonna get stuck in there. So, I don't know, I'll either kind of run some urethane around that to stop any stuff getting in it. Obviously sides and bottoms fine because it's not gonna really collect in there and rust it out, but maybe I'm just overthinking it, but you gotta be on top of these kind of things. Yeah, so I've just obviously welded, just welded the tops and a little bit down the chassis rail. I'm expecting to have to cut these back, so we'll find out very soon. So we've got this side over here that's all ready to go. Uh, same thing, this one was a lot easier, uh, obviously because it was the second one and also because there wasn't, well this is already missing here. So much the same thing, kind of throw it in there, mark that out, get that all cut out, ground back. That's got some uh, weld through primer on it. And then obviously just clean that up. I put a, put a rat's tail file in each corner just to radius it so it's not going to be prone to cracking hopefully and then yeah just um, sprayed that and then I'll get some pinch weld around it and then we can weld this uh, coilover tower in which I'm currently just waiting on the paint to dry so I've decided to fully weld it so inside and 
kind of all the way down there. That's all welded. Because uh, I'm never going to get to this once it's in and take the body off, which isn't happening. So that's all sprayed. Um, two coats and uh, just left the parts that are going to be welded. So it's mainly the back. That's the only part, kind of the back from, I guess, there down. All right, so this is where we are at. I'm in a bit of a pickle, actually. So, um, as you saw before, coilover mounts are in. It's now time to basically, I want to get the radius arm brackets tacked up to the axle. But the problem is, I don't know where to put them because I don't know how bulky the shock, I mean, I know what the overall diameter of the shock is, but I don't know, you know, how much shaft there is before it steps out to the two and a half inch overall diameter with the coil. So it's a two inch body. Obviously the coil is then two and a half inch OD roughly. So I want to have it as wide as possible so that it's going to clear the chassis. Um, it's kind of, it's close, but obviously this needs to rotate over. So I need to have it all tacked up so I can put the axle through its kind of articulation motions to check. But the problem is I need to measure a shock. Well, I need to figure out what shock and get a shock here ideally so I can do this. But the problem is we're very close for the closed length on the um, Pro Fender shock that I want. Um, so it's 515 closed. Uh, if I'm mounting it on the top of the axle tube, it's not gonna work. But um, it's basically, when it's sitting at the ride height that I want, that's basically closed, so that's no good. At the moment, this is set up with about 80 mil of up travel. I could live with that. My rears don't have that much up travel. They're more down travel, and they work well. Um, obviously, you can tune the coilover shocks to work with whatever setup, so not too concerned, but I just obviously want to make sure things are correct before I bite the bullet and spend big money on some shocks. Um, so, I don't know. Another cool little thing, these bits of um, old go-kart axle fit perfectly in the kind of, well, the OD of this fits perfectly in the ID of the axle tube. So, I've cut a couple of bits of this so I can measure off this and also kind of project out where the center line of the wheel is going to be. So, that's working really cool. Um, I have done a little bit of scalloping on this bracket. I need to do a little bit more. Um, currently, this side of the diff is sitting about 10 mil further forward than the other side, so just going to radius that back a little bit. I just threw it in the mill before and just clamped them both together and just milled a bit of a radius, but I need to go a fracking more. So then over on the driver's side, you can see, look at that freaking flex. It's getting me pretty excited seeing this. Um, but like I said, I really need to get the radius arms at least tacked on so it's going to actually simulate what it's going to do. But um, yeah, same deal. When this arm comes up, kind of limited by shock tower. And also, as you can see, I've cut them off. So I've got the plasma and just put a nice radius on that one. And that one's more just a straight cut. I need to go home, have a beer, and have some dinner and think about this. Um, I mean, Rad Flow, I'm going to be waiting ages to get them. Fox. Probably going to be waiting a while for them as well. And also, I don't know if they're an adjustable remote res. I really want the adjustment. So, um, I really like the Pro Fenders. So, I'm going to try and make them work. But for now, I'm just going to pack this shit up and get home. Could have got to work tomorrow. So, uh, see if I can do a half day or something and come back here and have a bit more of a play around. Ideally with a fresh mind. So, um, we're getting closer. These are the kind of the key things that need to be sorted. Then we've got to fuck around with tie rods and pan hards and all that stuff. But I don't think that's as fiddly as getting all this working properly. Because once you kind of burn these brackets in, that's it. So anyway, I think that's home time. All right, so a bit of an update. Um, it's now a couple of days after the last video. So I have ordered some shocks. I went with the 10 inch Pro Fender Remote Res eight stage adjustable like I was planning. I figured they're the only ones that I'm gonna get in time. They're the ones that I initially wanted. Um, as I was mentioning before, the Remote Res and also the adjustability with the um, 
a damper adjustment, which is a, a nice thing to tune. Um, so I've ordered them. I'm just gonna do whatever I need to do to make them fit. So after I finished filming um, the other night, as I was kind of jacking the rear diff up, it fell off the jack and uh, crushed my finger <laughs> between the diff and the concrete slab. So I'm a little bit crippled at the moment, but uh, trucking on. So I've just come in the Sava and I've just been playing around a bit more, um, getting the axle kind of squared up or parallel to the rear axle and obviously all my laser and set out marks. So I've been scalloping the brackets that Matt gave me for his 80 series diff that suits the flipped arms. So I've kind of scalloped them as much as possible. And then I've done some little kind of um, strengthening rings, which I'll show you in a sec. I'll uh, just cut them out with the plasma and uh, yeah, I'll probably weld them on soon to the bracket and then I'll leave the bracket loose on the diff housing until I get the coil over just so I can kind of get an idea on what the absolute widest I can push that radius arm mount on the diff. So you can see here, this is the strengthening ring I was talking about for the radius arm. So that's to bridge the gap on Matt's um, brackets that obviously suit the 80 series diff which has got a square top on it. They're very close but what I'm going to do is essentially weld this to the bracket and not weld to the diff and then I'll probably take it off, also weld the inside uh, and then I'll obviously weld all that and then the brackets are ready and that will also hold the diff in the right spot and it will go to the right spot every time which is parallel to that uh, x-axis and then the same thing again on this side I'll just cut some so once I've got the diff dead parallel I'll tack them on pull them off weld the inside weld the outside and then we've got the diff ready and located I've triple checked everything again and um, we're looking we're like literally to the millimeter from you know the center line of those bolt holes to the laser Everything's nice and true, so it's looking looking promising. All right, the day has come. Coilovers are here. So uh, I'll give you a quick rundown on what I've done, kind of tinkering in the meantime, then we'll have a look at the coilovers and what I'm thinking with them. Okay, so while I was stuffing around the other day waiting for coilovers, I just turned up these bosses to weld in on there. I've left them a little bit um, wider just so I had some room for movement. If I ever change shocks or whatever, just means I'm not limited to um, obviously a set distance. And also I didn't know what the distance was. Uh, these coilovers are 45 mil across the misalignment spaces. So what I ended up doing was um, a couple of the old bushes from the Surf's IFS lower control arms when I changed them, they're actually already 16 mil ID and pretty close, well they're a you had to turn like a mill or two off them. I've turned up some Stano bushes as well the other day, so they're ready to go. I've just got to cut them down to suit whatever spacing I need to um, adapt out to the coilover. As you can see here, these are just some off cuts that I had. Just punched a 16 mil hole through them and turned them down to whatever it was, like 24 mil OD or something. So um, yeah, I'll probably go and chuck them up in the lathe shortly and cut them down to the actual size and I need to adapt it. And then over here, we've got the coilovers. So these are the Profender 2.0 um, remote res, eight stage adjustable. Um, I, as I've probably said before, I really wanted the eight stage adjustable because I've got superior rear shocks, which are, you know, same thing basically. Um, so Profen Profender make the ones for superior their branded ones. Uh, they're a really good quality unit. I really rate them. And just having that damper adjustment, it makes a world of difference. So these are a 10 inch. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit the 12s. If I wanted to go with King Shocks or Fox or Radflow, I think the 12 inches will fit. It's a weird, it's a weird kind of size. So that's one thing to look out for. Um, thankfully with Troy's uh, or TM Fabs, coilover towers, they go up higher than uh, a few of the other ones I've seen, so that allows me to hopefully just get away with running this, because um, I don't want to raise the vehicle height too much. Um, if I lifted the vehicle another inch or so, it would probably be fine, but ideally I don't want to do that. One thing just to check is um, 
not all coilovers are the same open and closed length, so just check that out if you're doing your own project. But these are a very, very nice quality unit. So we've got the obviously top kind of spring hat. That's what you set your preload on the coils with. So these are the lock rings that basically choose where your top spring locks out on. So there's heaps of good videos online if you are interested in this, but basic rundown with these kind of coilovers, you run two coils and this kind of slides with the coils. You've got your upper and your lower. You can run different spring rates if you want. You can run the same, uh, different configurations, but basically um, it's, a, it's a true dual rate. So your upper spring uh, will compress to a certain point, hence these lock rings, and then you'll only be riding on your lower spring. So it's a really cool tunable setup. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very curious to see how these go. Um, once they're tuned, they should run really nicely. And the handling, albeit solid axle, I think it will handle a lot better than the Surf ever has with the IFS. I'm probably gonna go uh, 200 over 250 pound um, spring rates, and it'll be two 12 inch springs. Normally you wanna run um, a spring that is the travel of your shock and then one that's two inches longer. Uh, in this case, they only sell the 12 inch coil, so I've checked with Superior and my hunch was right, I'll just run two 12 inches, so that should be okay. Um, but yeah, tons of info on setting these up online if you are interested. I may run through it once it gets to that point. I haven't ordered coils yet because I'm still not 100%. I've kind of done the calculators and everything and I've spoken to a couple of people um, and it's kind of all coming back thinking 200 over 250, so um, we'll go with that. Um, what else? This is your kind of bottom bottom coil plate, so that just clicks on there, sits there. And then obviously there's some washers. I'm guessing they're for the aluminium surfaces. So it'll be a washer top and a washer bottom. Um, also internal bump stop, which is good. Um, I was gonna put a bump stop on the shaft anyway, just to be sure. I will probably put some under the diff body as well once I've kind of got everything mounted up. Um, and then obviously the reservoir, eight stage. These are really nice quality. And like I said, they make a good, a good difference for drivability. So that's that. And the cool thing, Troy's uh, towers have actually got slots already to put hose clamps and mount that to the side of the tower. So that's good. So then, yeah, obviously home joints, top and bottom. Uh, these are your misalignment spaces that go into the home joints. So this overall width is 45 mil. Um, I think that's pretty standard. I've never used these before, so I'm still learning and new to this stuff. And then also here, I bought some of Superior's um, universal kind of shock mounts. So these, as I'll show you in a sec, I'm planning on putting them at the back side of the diff housing. So this will probably incorporate the steering lock stop as well. I'm just about to have a bit of a play around with that, and then I'll report back to you guys once I've got some progress on that. So. These should save me a lot of stuffing around. I figured for the money um, to buy these already done, ready to go, um, it'll probably save a lot of stuffing around and it actually might work perfectly for what I need. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. So this is obviously the standard configuration. You've got your lock stop bolt, which hits on this tab here. Um, so if we take that out, so just for a reference, that's kind of where the lock stop is. If we replace, that lock stop with this bracket and we remove this bolt you see now if that's sitting there we get the same amount of lock and then we also gain the coilover mount so I've basically made a decision this is pretty much the only spot it can go so what I'm going to do is cut these off this side and the other side I'm going to weld this on um, I'll probably end up tilting the axle to obviously the caster kind of setup that I'm going to be running on the vehicle and get these obviously I'll probably shoot shoot the laser through or something and get these lined up with each other weld them on well I'll tack them on first and um, then we can throw the axle back under the car chuck the coil over in and um, see how it all fits all right guys a pivotal moment the radius arms are now attached to the diff. So like many times before, set the laser up, back to all my reference marks, checked everything, 
check the parallel of the axle to both my parallel marks and other points on the vehicle which I've been measuring off. We're within 0.3 of a mil, I would say, so that's pretty freaking good. Um, basically, I've got, got the axle up on the jacks, kind of at full bump at the moment. It could probably go a tiny bit more. Got a tiny bit of clearance under the oil pan there, which I was worried about. These radius arm brackets and bolts to the chassis is what I was worried about, but it looks like on a straight kind of bump they should be fine. Um, obviously once the, once the axle starts flexing it's going to be different because it's obviously going to put these brackets on an angle. But I'm hoping, um, for instance, if the driver side's down, the panhard's going to be somewhat pushing this across. So when this is on full kind of compression, this should hopefully be a little bit further away from the chassis than what it would be at ride height with the panhard in its neutral kind of ride height position. And then for the driver's side here, once this side goes to full bump, the panhard then being down there should be pushing the axle that way as well. So I think we should be golden. Everything's looking really good. The only moment of truth, which I'm gonna do in a sec, is I'm gonna drop this axle all the way down so I can connect the uh, coilovers, get them bolted in, because they're too stiff, there's too much nitrogen charge to compress them and test them um, without welding everything to the axle. So I've just had to send it. Everything's basically dead true. Both radius arm brackets are dead equal from the center line of the diff. Um, everything's lining up. At ride height, it's ended up with about, uh, about five and a half, six degrees of caster. So, so obviously this is at full compression, but you can see how much it can vary by rotating that. So just on average, it's about six. So that allows me when the, when the axle is kind of going through its motion, and especially if I do end up raising the car a tiny bit, it'll kind of get me some more caster. So um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with everything. All right, so there we go. She's all connected. So uh, we'll just cycle it up and I'll kind of show you where it's going to sit at ride height. And then, well actually first up, let's go full, full compression. All right, so that's the diff housing touching there. So let's call that full compression, I guess. Um, obviously when it's flexing, it's going to be different, but um, yeah, we've still got a good 20, 25 mil of shaft left before it hits the bump stops. And actually another thing I'll touch on, I was talking to Kaido yesterday and he was saying apparently, because these are such weird sizes, he was saying apparently with the 12 inches, you can actually cut these down, um, which I can now understand what he's talking about. So I had a look on the internet when we were talking about it before I'd got these and the ones that I was showing on the internet had an internal thread that this, um, this cap screws on with. Yeah, let me get some light. So these ones, as you can see, are an external thread and it looks like the cap, the top cap screws on over that. And I'm guessing it's probably an O-ring seal on the inside. So I am still considering potentially so I am still considering potentially selling these and getting 12 inch ones, cutting them down. Because when you cut the 12 inch down, they have a bit more travel than the King 12 inch and they will fit perfectly here. So that's something I may end up doing. Uh, I thought I'd just mention that. I don't know whether you guys have heard that or done that yourself. Um, but I mean, it's gonna be way better than what I've ever had before, um, but more is always nice, so um, I'm kind of stuck stuck with that thought now, but everything's looking good. Um, I guess we'll go down to where it's gonna sit at ride height. That's pretty much what it's gonna be at ride height, so that's yeah, probably about 90, 90 mil. Obviously, it's probably only that much usable. Um, we'll see how it goes. Obviously I won't know until I've got kind of wheels and tires and springs and all the preloads and everything set up, but um, we can make this work. 
Yeah, I think next thing on the list is we'll have a look at getting this pan hard mounted. So I do have the upper pan hard bracket and also one for the diff, which I think. Oh yeah, there it is. Anyway, you'll see it closer soon, but I folded that up and welded that yesterday ready. That's the bottom one. And we just gotta figure out the top one. I don't think it's gonna fit where Troy's kind of indicated it. I might have to move it over a bit more to clear this um, flipped radius arm. So we'll have a play around with that. And I will report back once I have some info. Okay, I couldn't help myself. The angle of the shock was doing my friggin' head in. So thankfully I had another bolt hole to play with on the chassis radius arm. So I've basically gained, I moved it to the forward hole and I've kind of gained probably an inch and that straightened the shock up. It doesn't look as cockeyed because to be honest I'm a bit, a bit OCD and it was doing my head in. Unfortunately this is a bit of a Frankenstein setup so it's obviously not made to work like this as a kit so I'm just kind of piecing stuff together and trying to make things work. So far it's looking good so yeah that looks a lot better. And then you can kind of get an idea I've just put a wheel in line with the center line of the axle so I don't think it looks too weird it's kind of that uh, extended wheelbase look which I think is good another inch of wheelbase can't hurt so um, yeah, I'm going to kind of roll and set everything up based on having the radius arm bracket at the furthest point and uh, yeah I'm going to start looking at the pan hard like I said I was going to do just before so I'll see you soon all right, so I figured it's time for another update. As you can see, I've got things assembled and uh, putting this thing through a bit of a flex. So I've had a bit of a disrupted day today. Lots of people dropping in, not much work done, but I've been kind of playing around. So I guess firstly, while we're on this side, um, I have taken the old Pitman arm off and put the flat one on. Um, was pretty tightly on there. I ended up getting a proper Pitman arm puller. Um, just wound that on, gave it a whack and it came off pretty easily. I tried with the three jaw last night, but it wouldn't budge. So um, yeah, definitely recommend using the Pitman arm puller. And then I've basically taken these two bolts out and rotated it flat. So it's gonna clear, well it does clear, I've tested it under the chassis rail there nicely. So I've just got to use this plate here, which I'll show you guys later once I get to it. Well, I think that basically welds to the chassis like so. I'm still figuring out exactly, I'm pretty sure that's basically how it's gonna go. But um, yeah, everything clears nicely. So obviously I had to get that on to then check clearance for the pan hard. So it's a tight fit with the flipped arm. Um, as you can see, that's normally where the pan hard mounts. And usually if you're using everything in the kit, that will just bolt straight on there and be fine. Um, but in my case, I've had to make it so that it will clear the diff and this arm. I've kind of customed the brackets. It's kind of hard to show, but instead of them, this is looking side on, instead of them coming down plumb, I've tilted them in. So it kind of goes in under the chassis rail. Oh, it's very hard to show, but you kind of get the idea. So I've just tacked them on. Um, that's obviously holding it up. I'm just in the middle of kind of cycling the axle through its range of motion just to check clearances on everything. And I guess over this side, see we get pretty well tucked in there. And then, yeah, you can see everything's clearing quite nicely in there with that wheel and that bump stop. So with that shock on the bump stop there, um, there should be just enough clearance for the spring. Uh, everything else is looking good. Um, pan hard sitting at a really nice angle, very constant with the drag links. So that is one of the most important things as I've probably mentioned before. You wanna set your pan hard up as long as possible. So as you can see, I've brought this bracket right out to the edge of the diff there. That works really well where it is. Um, so that's the TM bracket. I've just modified it slightly to fit there. I've ended up cutting the um, bump stop or the steering stop tab off. So much the same as the shock mount on the back side. Um, I've just taken the, the lock nut off there and put it on the back side, which as you can see, 
that equals the same amount of steering lock, so that's working well. Um, I'm pretty well happy with how everything's come out, so um, it all fits, and I'm just gonna put the axle through. Uh, I'll just lift that end up and check that the pan hard, well actually, when that ends up, the pan hard should be down on this way, so it's only gonna be really when the whole axle is up level that that pan hard will come close to anything, and if anything, I think it will clear quite nicely. There's a perfect kind of recess in the oil pan for it, so um, yeah, it's coming together. And also, this shock over here still has another probably 25 mil it can drop down, so I'll be very keen once everything's kind of final welded to give this thing a proper flex test. Um, it's not gonna be crazy, but it's gonna be, gonna be quite nice. You know, as you can see there, it's basically dropping down just flush with the sill, so that's always a, a good indicator. So these are obviously 10 inch in the front, then the rears are a four inch superior 80 series, which is about 11, 10 and a half, 11, 11 and a half, can't remember. So very much the same when that's on full flex, the wheel drops down below the sill, so should be kind of on par with the rear. So I'm getting pretty excited. Okay, so everything you just saw and heard, forget it. Next day, <laughs> Literally after I finished filming the part that you just saw, um, I obviously did the articulation kind of cycle and then I cycled it straight up as if you're hitting a, a big bump, both wheels, the whole axle moves level and moves as one. So the bracket that I cut up and modified to clear everything, well, what I thought was gonna clear everything, didn't, it was hitting, um, sorry, the tie rod, was hitting it or something. But anyway, I've started fresh again today. I think I've got it nutted out. I have to make a couple of mods to, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, so I've, so I've spent most of the day on this one friggin' bracket, which is really annoying. I've still got to fuck around with the steering box as well. That hopefully shouldn't be too bad. I've got it in a good position now. Um, so it clears the tie rod. It should also just scrape under the chassis rail. But the biggest thing's been getting the pan hard rod to fit with both because I want to get obviously maximum up travel, um, especially because I want to have a low kind of ride height, which I've had before. I don't really want to lift it because the rear end sits nicely where it is. Um, I don't really want to have to lift the front because I have to do the rear. So I'm hoping I can make it all work. That's kind of the suspension travel we've got left to play with. Um, obviously the spring seat's not on there at the moment. But um, yeah, I've, I've basically, had to play around, keep articulating the axle as high up as possible, checking everything. Um, it's been a bit of a shit fight, but I'm finally pretty close. And as I keep mentioning, the pan hard angle matches the drag link angle, which is beautiful. So this is basically sitting at ride height, so it's a nice flat geometry. Everything is looking really good. But the problem I've got, oh, I'm sick of crawling on the ground probably see that line I've scribed onto the sump. So the pan hard is just kissing there when we're getting really close. And then also, once this kind of outer hump on the diff gets right up, it just kisses that little arc in the pan hard rod, which is really annoying. I can probably scallop a tiny bit out. Uh, it's a really thick, beefy rod, so I think if I took you know, even five mil, just a little, really gradual kind of scallop out of it, I think I should be right, but um, yeah, it's all, it's all working pretty well. There's a lot going on in this area. So I'm undecided whether I try and do some panel beating on the sump or whether I pull it off and just cut that section out and put like a little quarter section of pipe or something in there. I also don't think I'm gonna be able to put the um, truss on the top of the diff housing just cause um, the oil pan clearance is gonna be very tight. Okay, so that's pretty much lifted up till it's hitting something. I think the pan hard's hitting the sump. So that's what's left on the shock. I'm hoping I can show you on the camera. So you can see how that part of the diff is just touching the pan hard there. 
If I take a little scallop out of that, I reckon I can rectify that. Um, and then obviously, oh, probably not going to be able to show. It's very hard to see all the all the linkages in the way, but just kissing the sump. So that's where I'm at. So yeah, just a bit of an update. I thought I'd just film this before I go too far and kind of forget where I've come. I've literally accomplished pretty much nothing today. So this is obviously the part of the job where things start to slow down. It just reaffirms a saying that I always use, which is the last 1% takes 99% of the time. So um, yeah, I think next up, if I get everything clearanced, I'm hoping I don't have to pull the oil pan off. If I do, it's not that big of a deal because it's now that all the IFS shit's cut out, it's easy to get to all the bolts. It's obviously just another job to do. I do need to actually change the oil in this anyway, so it's not too big of a deal. I'm not losing good oil that I've already got in there. Um, so we'll see. I'll have a bit of a play around, then I'll report back when I've got some better progress. So um, yeah, I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so here's a quick look at what we're working with. Um, so the thing to keep in mind is the reason why this is such a fuck around is because I've done flipped arms. So um, I knew that obviously there'll be a bit of custom work involved to get everything to work and thankfully everything seems to be working and it's going to work. But just keep in mind, um, obviously if you're using either Kinsella's kit or TM's kit or whoever's kit, um, obviously they've designed everything to work um, as specified in the setup for it. So because I've put the flipped arms, basically I couldn't put the pan hard mount out here where it's meant to be, because obviously this arm's in the way. Obviously, normally it's underneath, so there's a bit of room. So that would normally get rid of the issue that you have with the uh, diff. Although I do, I do wonder, they must set up at a different or a lot taller ride height because obviously pan hard you want to follow the height of your drag link which that's basically where it always comes out so I don't know exactly how these are normally set up but um, that's kind of the biggest issue with the flipped arms with this setup um, I've got it to work and as you can see the only the only tight spot is when I'm at absolute full bump and hard, hard right lock. So I've managed to clearance these brackets so it just clears, as you can see. And then I've got the pan hard mount also in there just clearing. Gonna have to get a bit creative with what I do for a fastener for that though. I'm kind of thinking um, I'll probably weld a captive nut. Well, I'll, I'll over drill the hole, weld a captive nut in there and then put the bolt in through the backside. It's about all I could do. I was thinking about using a countersunk because these are an M16, so a countersunk M16 head is about 10 mil like depth. So even that is going to be very close. Um, and I would have to um, probably turn up a conical washer for that to go into because obviously by the time I countersink into the six mil plate, there's going to be barely any um, material left probably get away with a regular bolt here just machine it down a tiny bit uh, I've probably got about just on probably 10 mil so if I run no washer and machine that head down should be golden there and then while I'm here I'm, I've been looking at what I'm going to do for the bump stops so Matt normally runs bump stops uh, under the chassis he normally runs the 80 series front bump stops which is probably what I'm going to run as well normally runs them down under the chassis where it hits the diff. Uh, because this is such a weird kind of angle on this side, so it's kind of in this concave area, so it's not the nicest thing for a bump stop to be hitting. So what I'm thinking is I'll probably make up like a bump stop pad that comes off here and mounts a 80 series bump stop, which will hit the top of the radius arm. So that should clean the whole bump situation up. And also, in theory, I'll have to obviously test it in person, but I'm thinking that when obviously that end of the axle for instance is down this isn't going to be as close to the top so it'll be relying on this bump stop which will and does allow full wheel tuck up into the guard so so obviously still early days on that but i'm going to order some and i'll play around with that as well because obviously i want to get all the fabrication stuff kind of 
nutted out and tacked up and welded out as much as possible and then kind of pull everything off, finish burning everything in, uh, paint it all up and then do a final assembly. So um, yeah, like I said before, I think it's time to get onto the steering box now. So I'll probably report back to you tomorrow because this will be a bit of a, bit of a fuck around, I think. <sighs> My God. Today has been an absolute shit fight. Um, I've just finished up for the night. I don't even know what time it is. It's probably like eight o'clock or something. Um, I've pretty much spent all day getting this steering box mounting sorted. So I'll give you a look what I did in a sec, but just a quick rundown before I forget. Um, basically the bracket that Troy gives you, it looks like you keep the top kind of spot and then you pivot it around to flatten it out so the pitman arm's straight. But the problem with me, um, I don't know whether it's because I've got the diff further forward or whether I'm using a higher point as the absolute kind of highest point for compression for the axle. So basically I was going to have issues with the drag link ball joint at the pitman, pitman arm end touching the tie rod. So I've had to move the pump to a point where everything clears. I've also had to rotate the pump kind of front to back to flatten it out like you normally do so it clears under the rail. And then also, um, I've also had to kind of tilt it, um, tilt the top of the pump in towards the engine and probably, I don't know, a couple of degrees, just so the steering shaft can get past the coilover tower. So it's just kind of one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. It's a shit of a spot. Um, had to drill all new holes and there's already there's already been a repair job here before so there's already already bits of weld and plate and oh my god this is the shit fine.